Good afternoon and happy new year of the rooster, Chinese uh, zodiac. And it's going to be an auspicious year as we start in a very calm, calm world uh, that may erupt at any time <laughs> during this year in, in uh, many, many ways. But uh, right now we're very calm and we'll discuss uh, uh, many issues uh, dealing with trade and transportation. I have uh, on my uh, left, Russell Liu, uh, my uh, co-host. This is Asian Review, uh, Global Connectors, and uh, the focus is on China, Greater China, and uh, on, on how connections are made physically through transportation and trade. And that's, that's uh, one of the topics we're going to delve into today. So Russell, uh, tell us about this uh, Silk Road historically and, and uh, how that really benefited China and its uh, trade with the world. And what does the Silk Road uh, mean as we discuss trade today? Sure, Ray. First off, to say Xin and Kwai La, it's Happy New Year to Year the Rooster, Year the Chicken, with many good things looking ahead. Um, and today's topic is, is, is the um, transportation road, the right. Silk Road. You know, China's come up with a very ambitious project, One Belt, One Road, that will, that will go through the western part of China, through Russia, Poland, all the way through Europe. In fact, there was big news about a week ago or two weeks ago, first Chinese train out of Zhejiang, which is way out on the seaboard, on the eastern part of China, right. making its way. It's going to go all the way to London. So this is an auspicious start for the Chinese with their ambitious program, trying to recreate the Silk Road, uh, recreate that trade that, that went through their centuries. And it's a very ambitious project because China today has um, done such remarkable things, building trains, infrastructure, and they have a lot of capacity and a lot of skill. So, so that's what they're doing now. And it'll be very interesting because this one belt, one road project, all this infrastructure, it won't be tied in, at least from what I understand. There won't be uh, treaties, agreements, but more of an economic uh, uh, type of uh, setting up an economic uh, channel for countries to participate along this. One Belt, One Road. Well, that sounds fantastic. Uh, when you look at the United States, uh, trains uh, began to emerge as uh, a major transportation system in the 1830s, 40s, into the 50s. Remember, the first real transportation system was uh, uh, canals, Erie mm -hmm. Canal, you know, how to get uh, iron ore or, uh, or uh, uh, resources from one place to the factories on the East Coast of the United States. And then we, in the 1860s, of course, we have uh, the first uh, 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 war, the Civil War, uh, was conducted through trains. So when you think about it, uh, trains uh, brought uh, you know, troops to one place and then took them to another place. And then uh, manifest destiny, trains continued going to the uh, uh, West Coast. So you had the transcontinental uh, uh, train and the go golden spike that joined uh, the e uh, East and West Coast of the United States. And that began to flood the West, uh, Western United States with settlers and, mm -hmm. and, and trying to get grain and, and beef and uh, pr uh, produce, all kinds of things back to uh, the East Coast. When you look at China, uh, of course, uh, since uh, the uh, beginning of the People's Republic in '49, they must have focused on trains uh, to um, to connect this huge country, the size of the United States. So, and and uh, so, uh, how what's the priority of trains as transportation and commerce in the uh, government of the PRC? Mm -hmm. How do they look at trains? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, I think the train links the country together. First of all. Um, it brings political stability because, again, um, people are tied in. Um, in the past, they were not tied together. Um, if you didn't have any money, you can't travel. Um, there was an airplane, but trains are unique because they can move a lot of people. You know, um, in China, the biggest, the most, the most, the biggest day the trains are used are the Chinese New Year. That's right. Eight hundred yeah. million right. people. All going to all the local uh, train station at right. once. <laughs> well, they, they, they're all working the cities, right. you know, and, and they're all going to go back home right. to their 
into the in this countryside. So trains play an important role to link the country. And I think they, 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 you know, you, I think the observation that you just pointed out with the Transcontinental Rail Railway, how America was built because of the trains. Similarly, China has similar aspirations because in, like in the U.S., you move from the eastern seaboard right. to the west because of trains. So the same thing with China. From the eastern seaboard, where all the wealth, all the cities, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangzhou, with the trains now connected through the country, um, freight trains, high-speed trains, um, we're seeing a, a, a China that, that is developing in its own way. This is the, the domestic growth, the domestic market. So we're going to see a lot more trade, a lot more domestic consumption, a lot more uh, domestic manufacturing because of the train moving across the country. Well, it's interesting to point out also that uh, countries that started out with trains and expansion of uh, railroad networks, like the United States, after World War II, the United States went to trucks and automobiles, uh, Route 66 and so forth. Uh, the last 20, 30 years, uh, the laughingstock of uh, the United States has been Amtrak. It's not a good experience in you know, riding Amtrak uh, through from one city to another. There have been uh, new projects for high-speed trains, as you know, uh, within the United States, from, say, uh, San Francisco to Las Vegas or from San Francisco to, down to uh, L.A., uh, Los Angeles, and San Diego, and so forth. But compared to Japan, where it's a country the size of California, and I could get a ticket uh, from Tokyo Station and get to uh, Osaka in two and a half hours, mm -hmm. uh, and it's so... Uh, so efficient, and the train ride, the te train technology, are all um, very, very uh, high tech mm -hmm. when you think about it. Now, you p pointed out a very interesting thing. There's two parts to trains in China, one for uh, transporting uh, commercial items, right? Produce, uh, raw materials, finished materials from place to place. The other one, of course, is to give a better experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, tell us about, you know, the last few years, there have been uh, better train experiences, sleeper trains and so forth from mm -hmm. Beijing to Shanghai. Mm -hmm. uh, how is that for uh, the uh, consumer? Sure, that's a good question. Uh, about 10 years ago, 13 years ago, when I first rode the trains, old green trains, <laughs> and they had uh, four separate classes. One was a room where everybody sat, the right. hard seat. Right. Then they had uh, other smaller rooms, the hard sleeper. Right. And then you had the soft sleeper. Right. And if four another wanted to, to ride that train, right. you could actually get a room with oh, the two right. beds. Right, right, right. Uh, so the I compartment. Would, the compartment. Kind of, yeah. And I, I always rode the trains that uh, there were four bunks. <laughs> and it was a very interesting experience. But I love those trains because you would leave at 7 at night wow. out of Beijing and right. you get at 8 in the morning, next morning oh, in, in Shanghai. Right, 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 but right. now with today's trains, which, which I ride a lot, is, yeah. is the uh, taking the train from Beijing to Shanghai is a high-speed right. train. I'm right. there in four and a half hours. Right. And wow. considering if you were catching a plane, you'd have to go to early the airport, you'd do security check, you'd have to wait, you'd have to get on. When you arrive at your destination, you have to wait for your luggage. That's about the same time. Mm -hmm. And on the uh, on the new high speed trains, uh, it, it is a wonderful experience. It, there's no noise. It's quick. It's fast. And the interesting thing about it is you get to see the countryside in China. You get to see all these right. other cities along the way. You see Nanjing, right, right. Shanghai, right. and, and you, it's very impressive. Right. Uh, and uh, I think it gives a lot of pride to the Chinese that that they have the high speed train, and the U.S. really doesn't have. It. So uh, what you're saying is that. Uh, from the end of the war to now, the United States really didn't have a priority in developing uh, the most high-tech trains. I mean, the, the focus when you look at computing, when you look at semiconductors, when you look at cars, a lot of attention in R&D went into those categories of goods, um, you know, of, of systems and, and products. But trains stopped. Mm -hmm. uh, they just stopped mm -hmm. uh, as, as, a, uh, as, a, as a product or focus for the United States. In Japan, it's continued to uh, uh, develop in many, many uh, areas. Germany is uh, Europe, of course. Uh, you're aware of uh, very high-speed trains. Uh, t and in France, TVG, uh, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, you could go from uh, Lyon all the way to, you know, across the channel into London. There are trains that, you know, are high speed uh, throughout uh, uh, Western Europe. And what you're saying is that uh, the train technology is a priority for the Chinese government. Yes. And, and I, I think I want to point out also, 
to train technology, to train strategy. That's what China is doing, not only in China, but it exerting its influence in, in South America, Latin America. There's planned a major project to build a mega line, Brazil, Peru. And I was up at meeting with some Chinese from Peru. There's three generation Chinese in Peru. And the big talk is about the Chinese. Hmm. The Chinese from mainland China is coming to, to change uh, Peru and South America. So I think, I think that this whole idea of the train, it, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's helping develop other countries. And that's what China's political clout uh, is part of one of their strategies. Well, you have a very good point because um, if I wanted to ride a train uh, from uh, San Diego to the uh, southern tip of, of uh, Chile, I can't. <laughs> and, but you're right. Why isn't there a train uh, or a train system uh, uh, that could carry me? Like uh, in the past, uh, the lo long uh, haul trains were from, uh, I believe, Vienna to Vladivostok. Remember the mm -hmm. old Russian uh, Trans-Siberian Express mm -hmm. that ran uh, you know, uh, all the way out there. But uh, now we're looking at an ex uh, expression or projection of soft power mm -hmm. by China mm -hmm. uh, to really um, uh, help other countries. Uh, in Latin America, uh, what other countries that really uh, would need that type of train infrastructure? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, first of all, the China's main emphasis is, is countries like Brazil, Peru. Um, for one thing, it is the Panama uh, Canal, which is a route everybody relies on. The cost has is, is risen tremendously to get goods through there back to, to China. So now, uh, with, with the uh, railway, um, it's easier to take it from overland route from, from the eastern, from the Atlantic Ocean side to the Pacific coast. And that's what the Chinese are looking at, um, uh, to bring products, bring supplies, uh, raw materials, uh, back to China uh, through the Pacific Coast and not having to go through the Panama Canal. Well, we're going to get back into that whole world of commerce after this break from Asian Review. Aloha, my name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome. We are co-hosts of a show called Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech Live Network series weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We're looking forward to seeing you then. Aloha! My name is Mark Shklov and I'm the host of Law Across the Sea. And Law Across the Sea is a program that brings attorneys who have traveled across the sea and live in Hawaii or are staying in Hawaii for a time to talk about their travels, where they're from, where they're going, and bring it all together because really we're all connected some way, although we travel across the sea. So I hope that you'll tune in and watch our program. Thank you very much. We are back in the world of Think Tech Asia in the new year 2017, the year of the rooster. We are very calmly discussing uh, commerce, uh, through uh, networks of trains, uh, which really is a uh, really a, a crucial part of societies trying to uh, really raise their economies uh, through transportation. And transportation is, is a key to uh, mm -hmm. to really developing economies. You're absolutely right. So just when we were uh, going uh, before our break, uh, Russell, you were discussing how uh, this transportation systems, efficiency and, and carrying goods from place to place, manufacturing goods um, uh, and, and of course um, raw materials to factories is a, uh, really a key to uh, development uh, mm -hmm. for economies, um, especially for uh, a whole continent like Latin America. Mm -hmm. And uh, you pointed out uh, area, uh, large areas like uh, Brazil, Peru, uh, some parts are not connected. Uh, the highways are not really developed mm -hmm. uh, very efficiently. Um, so we we uh, looking at uh, other uh, uh, parts of the world. Do you see uh, aside from Latin America, like Africa, will be a area for transportation uh, for tra uh, trains mm -hmm. and rail? Well, I think eventually Africa. You know, the, the all the experts say, the economists say that 
in 20 years, Africa will be the hottest spot. Uh, and I think that's going to happen. But in the meantime, um, I think um, the present situation, I think that um, Latin America, South America, Central America is, is really high in the, the priority list for, for the Chinese. Why? Because in the last couple of years, we had the uh, TPP, uh, now with uh, the President like Trump announcing uh, he's going to change the trade game with China. So China has been quietly um, building up its its, uh, its its supply chain, supply things, markets in, in South America. And um, it's interesting because many Chinese companies I envision will actually go to South America, Central America, and make investments there, become companies, local companies, ship them across the border to the U.S. Uh, tariff fee through CAFTA or NAFTA. So I see a lot of dynamics here, and so the urge and necessity to, to develop the infrastructure is very important for the Chinese, as well as when the Chinese uh, mine, uh, a lot of the mining comes from Peru, uh, it, rather than going through the Panama Canal, the new train routes would take it directly to the Pacific Coast, and it, it would be, it would save a, a, a tremendous amount of money in transportation costs. And as you say, in South America, uh, in Latin America, the roads are not built right. for a lot of this infrastructure. So this is a, a faster way uh, to leap ahead and use that technology. Use all the technology China has been developing over the years to uh, building railways, high-speed trains. So the, so the, the um, uh, background or how the Chinese really developed their technology for the uh, rail systems and networks came after years of domestic development uh, to, to address uh, the transportation of bottlenecks. Uh, you can't have millions suddenly boarding planes. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to have uh, a, a series or uh, uh, options like, like rail, like um, buses, like uh, uh, you can't have everybody in a car. <laughs> I think mean, that, that's, that's essentially uh, what uh, happened in the U.S. And, right. and mm -hmm. so uh, that also led to large freeway expansion in the U.S. I think, right. I think you're right, because I think yeah. in the U.S. it's a different culture, different mindset. We're an individual culture, individual society. We want to have our cars. Now, the Chinese are, are getting there. They want to have their cars. But again, the, the, the big thing is that when you're dealing with a lot of people, a lot of people, the systems will work and they've had experience moving people around. There's a saying that says when you move people, capital moves with people also. So that's good because people travel, people do businesses, um, going to the western part of China. Um, you know, there's been trouble because it's been uh, through the different groups like Uyghurs and the different minorities there. Um, again, th this will be something that would bring uh, opportunities for them as, as, as a train now the new routes, the one belt, uh, the Silk Road, uh, the new train that they just had kicked off that, that left from Zhejiang all the way to London, you know, that's going to pass through this area. So we're going to see a lot of changes, um, you know, positive changes for China. Well, it, it, it's China as a continental power, you know, through geography, like we were discussing before the show, uh, there are uh, bottlenecks when uh, China uh, tries to project outside uh, through the ocean, through maritime, uh, through ships and so forth. Uh, China did expand uh, through um, its, its naval uh, admiral mm -hmm. hey, uh, back in the you know, uh, 15th and 16th centuries. They did mm -hmm. go all the way to India and, and Eastern uh, Africa. They still find um, you know, Chinese pottery on the shores near mm -hmm. Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when you mm -hmm. think about it. So they did go out, but when the uh, Qing Dynasty started in the middle of the 17th century, kind of China became very isolated, sure. uh, became very uh, you know uh, focused inward, like Japan also at the same time, and really didn't go out. And uh, there was some trade that uh, 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 continued, and that's mm -hmm. through the Silk Road, mm -hmm. through Samarkand, Tashkent, you know that mm -hmm. area, mm -hmm. through Kazakhstan, and then going through Iran and going mm -hmm. through. Uh, uh, to Europe, you know, right. Turkey. So, I, I think yeah. I think the rallies of today's world, as we see uh, potential um, uh, issues, of China going to the South China Sea, right. around the Cape. You know, it's a long journey to haul things to Europe, and because of the political dynamics that's ongoing, uh, having a railway that goes all the way through Europe uh, will shortcut it. It will shortcut the cost, and it will bring economic opportunities um, much sooner than. Um, having to deal with the, the issues 
that are confronting China today, especially navigating through the water, uh, waterways through the southern part of uh, Southeast Asia. Well, and again, if you have trains uh, uh, you know, moving in the um, uh, western direction, uh, they have to uh, go through areas that the tracks must be of high standard. Mm -hmm. So again, that's, I, I think, an area where China has to uh, talk and discuss and negotiate how to uh, assist those countries to uh, really uh, maintain those uh, uh, rail railroad lines because yes. uh, it has to be a consistent, you know, high grade uh, line all the way going to, well, when you enter Europe, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, probably from uh, Belarus or Poland and so forth, it's, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But uh, before that, who knows? <laughs> well, that's why that's, yeah. that's big, China's big opportunity, a diplomatic opportunity uh, to trade. Um, to to help all these other countries increase their trade with China, and I, and I know that um, that that's part of their effort on the, the infrastructure to to work uh, with these European nations. Same thing what they're doing in South America. Uh, again, same thing is to bring that technology and build that infrastructure there. Now, South America is uh, one of those places that uh, really, um, uh, you know, Brazil. Uh, I'll point out is a country where uh, expectations were high. But every year, something happens. And uh, unfortunately, economists uh, call Brazil the country of the future and always will mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. And has really, uh, has not really uh, stepped up uh, in, in many ways uh, economically. And you're correct. Uh, but on the Pacific coast, uh, like Peru, it's now a multi-ethnic society. It's, it's growing in, in, in well, immigrants sure. and business and so forth. So I see Peru uh, as a kind of a bridge to the rest well, of, uh, uh, of Latin America. In I, think, I think Peru has already been that. I, 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 I've dealt with Peruvian Chinese who have been there from the 1850s. And there are 600,000 wow. Chinese there that are local Chinese that, have, that are like third or fourth generation in Peru. So I think it's always had that uh, international, um, it had the Chinese culture. But I think the, the key what's happening is, is that uh, countries like Brazil, they're seeing it's happening in Peru. They're seeing the Chinese going to Ecuador, Costa Rica, to all these other countries. So it is actually lighting a fire for everyone to make this play with China. Well, I think the, um, uh, that's the good news, I think, for uh, Latin America, because for so long, uh, as you know, the economies really are, were stagnant uh, and, and really were not uh, developing in a way. And I think one of the um, crucial um, uh, parts of the puzzle that never really um, uh, went uh, progress were uh, transportation networks. Yes. You're right. Yes, and, and I think you brought an interesting point, Ray, earlier. Why isn't there a train from the U.S. that goes all the way down yeah. to Latin America? <laughs> yeah. We have the technology and all right. of that. You know why? Think of the Great Wall, President Trump, elect, elect President elect <laughs> Trump was put. I think there is, is a there is a there is a thinking at least that America that we have is we will keep people out, and so therefore, if we run the trains through that, that means people would be coming on that train. Right. And, and okay. you want to, you don't right. want that to happen, right? So, so it's a, it's a, it maybe a very myopic view. Right. Uh, I, I mean, if 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 South America, Central America, were further along being developed through USAID, I, I think then uh, it may be a different quest story today. But it's not. And and the United States is the last place for high speed net, uh, train networks. I mean, uh, Canada has a very nice network that goes uh, you know uh, from uh, uh, west to uh, e east and, and vice versa. But in the United States, you would have expect you know, high-speed networks by now, but um, they really, um, really de never developed uh, in a way like uh, Japan or Germany or France and so forth. But that's because I, I think the uh, truck, truck networks were so uh, uh, much developed at the, and the freeways, and, and there was a major infrastructure project since the war. So uh, I think Latin America should not look at the United States as a, as a model <laughs> for uh, trained uh, you know, uh, networks. It would be too expensive to set up a network of, of nice roads and highways. It's cheaper to do a train. Right, 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 and exactly. It's much more efficient. And so I think that's the model that's going to be uh, changing uh, South America, Latin America. 
Well, it's it's an interesting thought too that um, uh, like you know there were trains in Hawaii for transportation. They're all gone. The sugar trains and mm -hmm. so forth. My father rode one every day from uh, Kahului to Hamakuapoko on Maui for high school. Mm -hmm. uh, but there, after the war, it all got torn apart. And so uh, when you t uh, put in something and you take it out. It'll never come back. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to come back. Mm -hmm. But this is, uh, in, in Latin America, virgin territory. It's like starting from zero. Mm -hmm. So you have right-of-ways uh, you know, and, and so forth that you can uh, develop uh, really quickly. Well, I think the key is, is, is they're leapfrogging technology. They're not going to Amtrak. They're, not, right. they're, they're, they're going to the state-of-the-art technology, uh, high-speed trade. So I think you know, a very different uh, t type of approach. So they'll be the beneficiaries. Of, of, a, of a more developed train system. And there was, there was another thing that developed in the United States that we forget is that the right of way for trains in the United States are freight trains over passenger. Mm -hmm. In the Japan, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. That uh, passenger trains took precedence over freight trains, and therefore that whole system of passengers, especially for moving people from the suburbs into uh, uh, inner Tokyo and moving them out in the evenings really developed the, the, the urban uh, you know, uh, system in, in Japan. So again, and you're correct that if we follow the Japanese model, like in China uh, that's emerging, there is the opportunity for a commercial mixed-use development at the train stations. Mm -hmm. So that's how Tokyo um, and, and uh, Odakyu and Keio, all these conglomerates uh, develop shopping centers and, mm -hmm. and housing around the train stations mm -hmm. and then they could feed into the inner city and go back and forth. So, so I think that's an opportunity also in China that, uh, like you say, it brings uh, economic development, business and mm -hmm. plants, but also for the train stations themselves to become uh, like centers for housing, commercial development, um, all ki kinds of things. Like in Japan, uh, there was one uh, English language school system uh, 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 that says Nova that said we have a um, English uh, school at every train station, <laughs> so you can move from uh, uh, place to place. Uh, any any uh, final thoughts on uh, the uh, next? Uh, uh, if you see uh, China and, and trains in the next ten to twenty years, what will happen? Well, I, I think I think that'll be very fascinating. I think I think um, that um, the train will will, will develop. China as a whole now. Um, major part of China is not developed, it's the western part of China. And what I'm seeing is that um, that part of China will develop. And with increased trade with Europe, um, there may be less reliance on the U.S. Uh, for one. Um, uh, the Chinese working in Latin America, South America, um, to helping them develop the trade um, uh, there, um, I think it's going to change again. Those changes are fantastic, and I think uh, one year from now, uh, at the end of this year, let's look at this topic again and see how trains are changing the world uh, in, in commerce and also for, um, for passengers. Thank you for this first show for Think Tech Asia, and uh, we'll see you again in 2017. Thank Happy you again. Happy New Year. Thank you.